Hello. We're going to go into Blender here and we're going to try and do some really quick game assets. Uh, we had some requests for how to texture and export where game engines would actually like your models. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually make sure Blender is in focus and then start hitting keys. You turn that on, you'll start to see the keystrokes. Um, so that was Anne that I had to bring in this transform panel. I'm going to pull this tab over here and we want to come over to this third tab over here in the tab farm and just double check that everything is in meters. And it said meters but when I clicked it again I started to see the meters over here so that's reflected. So most game engines work in meters or something close to it. Um, Unity definitely works in meters. I know the hammer editor will take meters and convert it to inches so it's just a good roundabout way to do things. Make sure everything's in meters for your game assets. So we wanted to do a quick UV texture unwrap and mark some seams. And I've got a cube here. But to keep it a little more interesting and from being just a cube, I'm going to go ahead and make this more like a book. So we'll just have this be a book standing up. I'm going to go ahead and make that x-axis the, the height of it. We're going to set that to like... Um, well, about an inch high, so two, two and a half centimeters. And let's say 25 centimeters ish would be 10 inches. We're going to make this, yeah, that'll work. 25 centimeters high and about 20 centimeters wide. And Control U is just what I've done here. Oh, I got those flipped. Control U is what I've used for a while. It's my own shortcut for zooming in because I don't have a number pad on my MacBook. All right, so we'll do 28 by 20. That looks like a book, textbook. All right, so come over here. I'm going to pull in a new view, grabbing that. We can make this new view be whatever we want it to be, and we're going to mess some things up and then show you how to fix them, because that's just fun. All right, so I'm going to take this, and around here where it says it has this cube, we're going to go ahead and switch that to a UV image editor. So I've got this. I hit tab mode, um, and quickly, without marking any seams, we're going to show that if I just try and do a... Let me turn that move tool off so it doesn't move around on me. If I try to just do an unwrap by hitting U... Um, it doesn't know what to do because because everything is still attached. It's basically got six sides, uh, six squares that is trying to. It's all overlapped and connected, and, and it can't can't do much with that. So we need to mark some seams. So I'm going to come down and hit edges. And what we'll do is we'll just mark the seams where the cover separates. So what we've done is we've isolated these three faces. That'll be the pages, and then we've got the other three going around it for the cover. So we've got those edges selected. I'm going to come over here to Shading and UVs and just go ahead and mark that as a seam. And now in my display when I'm in edit mode and nothing selected, um, you can see that those are red. Those are marked as a seam. So I'm going to select everything and I'm going to go ahead and try and unwrap again. And you can see we've got this. It looks like a giant Tetris piece. So when we moved the dimensions of this around, we adjusted the scale of it without really knowing that we were playing with scale. And that's not baked into the model yet. So Blender doesn't know that this isn't just a bunch of squares. Find it here. I'll go to go back into object mode. There we go. All right, so you can see we've got our dimensions we set up. 28, 20, 2.5 centimeters but here's our, our scales all crazy and so that hasn't been baked into the model yet so I'm gonna hit in, in uh, object mode with that select I'm gonna hit control A I'm gonna go ahead and apply rotation and scale just out of habit even though scale is all we've really messed with so far and if I tab and try and unwrap this again 
there you can see we've got something matching the dimensions of our book. So I don't want things real close to the edge here, so I'm just going to grab some things and move them around. So I'm going to pull my 3D view down a bit, and we're going to work here. If I hit T, so well, we'll come back up here. So I'm in Blender, got my 3D view. We saw N was the transform panel, pops that in and out, and T brings out my tools. Well, the same thing applies over here. So in my UV editor mode, I'm going to hit T, and we've got some cool things to work with. I'm going to select one vertice here in the UV and select linked, which we can get to by control L. And so now I've got everything. Can I move that over just like that? Straight over? That'd be fun. Not what I was wanting to do. Was that 128? Move that that way. I want to get this out of the way. So I can use the translate tool, or I can use this type in here. We just want to move that over, and then I'm going to do the same thing kind of over here. I'm selecting the book. This is what I want to get away from the edges. Uh, I'm going to hide that for now. We'll just use the translate tool. So we'll use select, linked. We've got the entire cover. Translate. We'll just move that up. Just so if we got anything weird along the edge of our texture later, it won't show up on our actual model. All right, so that's good. I'm going to go ahead and hit A a couple times there, and that should select everything. I'm going to come down to UVs, and I'm going to export that UV layout. And I'm going to drop that into my big nasty Blender goodies folder where I've got all my junk at. And it's set at 1024 by 1024, which is probably fine for what we're doing here. Just just a book. And this will be book UV. And I can pull that into Photoshop. And I can layer all kinds of cool stuff over the top of it, which I will. And I'll be back in just a minute with the results. So I'm going to export that layout. Looks like I've already got one. This is the new book UV. How about that? And there we go. Be right back. And we're back. Had to go teach a class or two. Apparently that's something I'm supposed to do. All right. So we've got our UV. We've got our book. I went out into Photoshop and threw some things together, including the cover of a book soon to be published. And we're ready to go. So I can add this texture here with the UV editor open. And it would display nicely here, but it wouldn't it wouldn't export for us. But we'll do that anyway, just to show that we can. So I'm going to go to Open, right down here. There we go. And I've got my book texture. Let's click on that and Open Image. And we can see that it lines up nicely with our UV outline, because that's what I made it do in Photoshop. Um, we come over to the 3D view, and it doesn't show anything, because we're still in the solid mode but we can go to texture and see that it does show up. Because of the lighting in this blender scene, we're only seeing the two sides, but it's there. Um, and if we tried to export this right now, it looks right, but we actually haven't created the texture node for it to export. So for now, we're done with the UV editor. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this little thing and pull over and you see the slight highlight of an arrow meaning we're going to overtake it with this view. Bring in my tools just because I'm used to seeing those. And over here in the in the little tab farm, um, we need to add a material to this. So we've got a material, but it thinks it's still just a plain gray, white looking thing. And if we tried to export it now, that's what we would get. So just go to tab. We don't need to be in edit mode for this. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and make this a new material, we'll call it a book material, just to differentiate it from anything else in our scene. Oh, and while I'm at it, I need to name my object. So while we, I don't want to say book cube, I just want to say book, so we'll call it textbook. Um, while we name our FBX, when we, when we bring it into a game engine, um, oftentimes we'll still get to see the names of whatever object it was in the scene. 
And if enough people on your team are using the word cube, that gets really confusing. So you should name things. All right, we've got a book material. We've named our textbook. Uh, we're going to come over just one tab here to texture. Now I've got something called text. That's fun. Um, but it's not set to anything yet. The type is none. I guess we can just reuse that one that's there. We'll just tell it it needs to be an image or a movie. All right. Let me come back over. No, okay, we're right. Still, we're still where we were. Uh, so it says image or movie. Movie. Um, there's no preview because we didn't tell it to do anything yet. And we're going to open again our texture from here. So book texture. Open that, and we can see it's reading the texture. And the way to really check if it's working is if we come over here to the material tab. I can see the, the green background and some of the pages. Can I move that around? Let me go to cubes. All right. So now I can tell that that book material is no kidding attached to that book. Um, and it should export nicely. So let me just go ahead and, and do the magic uh, control S because something actually worked. And we want to save our stuff often. Now it's just time to export. So I'm going to come to export and FBX. Um, and by default, it's going into my giant blender goodies, which is a, I should just call it goodie bag because it's just full of stuff now. Um, and the operator presets, I've got a few saved already, um, but by default, this is what we've got and that does not help us. We need, we need different settings here. So I'm going to pull this up a tip and we need, uh, first off, so the FBX 7.4 binary is fine, version main is fine. Um, if we had a scene full of things and we only cared about exporting the one thing, um, then we would go selected objects and we would select our, our thing and be specific about that. But that's not the case here. We've just got a book. I'm going to click that uh, off on so it doesn't try to scale on us. So that's the lighter color now. And for apply scaling, we're going to use the FBX unit scale, which just plays well when trying to plays better when trying to convert back and forth to meters and inches and whatever else. Uh, we did set this to meters, which is a great default for Unity. Um, Z forward and Y up, I believe, is fine. I've done a lot of tinkering with that, and that seems to work quite well in Unity. Um, and then I'm going to go to. I feel like it was. I feel like that's different. Maybe Unity will show the the original FBX is laying upside down. Uh, but we want to just export the mesh. We don't need the cameras or the lamps or any armatures or anything else like that. We do want to click this Apply Transform. Oh, quickly before I do that. So, well, I'll save this first, and then we'll go back before we export. Um, apply Transform. Just make sure that everything's cool. Um, and then this is our texture piece right here. So the path mode, we want to set it to copy. So it copies whatever textures we have into the FBX file. And just doing that isn't enough. I've got to click this little button next to it so it looks like we do indeed have a piece of paper going into the box. That should be everything we need for our export. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do this. And I've done it a number of times on this machine before. But I'm going to go ahead and save this preset so that I can use it again. And we'll call this uh, FBX Magic. I think it'll go to all lowercase. And now we've saved these setups. So now when we come back, all right, I've just got to use FBX Magic. And it sets all these things up for us, and we're good to go. Let me cancel that really quick because I just, I'd like to be sure. So I'm going to select my object, Control A. Apply rotation and scale. Um, we saw what that did to the texture and when the UV map, it just gets weird if we don't do that. So I just like to make a habit of it. So I'm going to go file again, back to export. Um, it went back to our defaults, but we saved FBX magic. It's right there. It should save all of our goodness and we just export. So I'm going to call this something new. textbook, test, FBX, export that thing, and we're good to go. And that should be a fully workable FBX for use in your game engine. Should have all the textures on board. The app, the rotation scale has been applied, so it won't be do anything weird in your engine. 
Um, and since we set that, uh, since we did the, let me go back to the screen. Since we did all the, the craziness with the scaling and units and turning that on and off, um, what we avoided there was potential problems where Blender tries to scale something for you for later use in engines. And then the engine says, hey, you scaled this and it rescales it back. Um, and what happens is you end up with an object that looks the right size but has about one hundredth of the mass as far as the physics in your engine is concerned. Um, and if you're using any physics that gets really crazy. Anyway, that should be everything you need to know to export an FBX for use in a game engine with textures from Blender. Have fun!